morning. Welcome to my podcast episode 22. Um, my name is Marlene and um, today I want to talk to you all about my whips and loads of acquisitions. <laughs> I've been to Copenhagen recently and um, I've also acquired some other stuff at a yarn festival which was pretty um, local to us like we we, were, we drove there for an hour which I, I feel is quite close um, and then there is yeah let me just start out talking about it oh yeah I did, I did also have a woolly knit collaboration but that has already ended so uh, I had a code for woolly knit for 20% off their website um, if you want to see stuff like that <laughs> Since I don't always get to film a new video with my work schedule and everything, it, it's probably best to follow me on Instagram because um, I because I do post there more regularly. And yeah, because I do not have any finished objects, I thought I'd start this video out with some live chat. Uh, I know I've been... Um, there was kind of like a cliffhanger in the last episodes whenever I was talking about my, my, my life, my work, my mental health. I really didn't want to have it feel like that. Like I didn't want to tease anyone with what I'm doing now, but also I was so exhausted at the end of the video. I didn't feel like talking about it. And also it's been quite a lot of stuff just like happening, a lot of decisions being made within the last couple of months. And so I just felt like it was right to talk about it in my own time. I really appreciate y'all's. Um, I don't know why I'm yalling, y'all. I just love the thing. I'm not even, like, I'm not American. I, I just, I'm not Southern American. I'm just yalling. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Uh, like, I didn't want to leave you all hanging um, with that. I did post about it on Instagram now since... Uh, I talked to my new boss. She's not wanting me to call her boss. So let's just talk about her as Melanie. Melanie owns Strick Verliebt in Marburg. So yeah, not talking around the bush anymore. I'm working at a yarn store now, guys. <laughs> it's the best. Um, so yeah, I didn't want to keep this from you guys. But honestly, um, obviously, it is difficult to make these decisions and I'm so thankful for your, for your, you alls, no, for y'alls, yeah, y'all is just working every time I try to say it, for all the support you've given to me, for all the kind words you've said, I uh, was blown away by the kind of like echo and yeah, just the, the messages I got about it and the comments. Uh, on my post where I announced what I was planning on doing, so leaving academia and starting to work at the yarn shop. I feel like my life's a book right now, like I would read this book <laughs> being kind of like a trying to make it all right and like be the first kid in a, in a family to even go to university and then like be the highest achiever and not even just do a BA or an MA but also earn my like PhD, which, yeah, that is now in the past. I've, I feel like I've kind of made peace with the whole thing. I hope that's, I'm feeling like, yeah, I hope that's true, but yeah, we'll, we'll see throughout the, the thing. So yeah, I'm working part-time at the yarn shop. Part-time is still 80%. So I'm, I'm there like four days a week. Um, although I'm going to have or ahead my first home office day on Friday. So I'm there um, in the, at the shop three to four times a week and then I'm working uh, a day in, or like a half day in, uh, at, the home, at my home, in my home office. Um, so I'm doing, obviously I'm working at the shop, so I'm doing sales. Um, I'm helping customers with their yarn choices or um, color choices, which is kind of like my most favorite thing, I think. Um, so, oh yeah, but like counting stock, um, putting more yarn in the shelves, uh, doing online shop orders, 
um, stuff like that. So I'm working at the shop, but I'm also working in marketing for the shop. So I'm primarily right now doing photography or like I've started working there on Monday. So <laughs> I haven't done um, a lot of the marketing stuff, but like I'm uh, thinking about possible like collaborations, people to bring on. I've actually um, got someone who I really love and who has great products to have us as one of their wholesale sellers, like shops, whatever. I'm not sure how much I'll talk about the shop on here, probably not as much. If, you, if you're ever in Marburg, come see me, come say hi, I would love that. There are already some people coming into the shop being like, oh, hi, I already know you. I'm like, that is fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, my iPad's always going dark and like I haven't even started talking about the stuff that I've made notes for, so <laughs> fun. Um, yeah, I did want to say, yeah, I'm not sure how much I'm going to talk about the whole thing on here just because like I felt like making the videos has been kind of... I mean, obviously my life has been like tipped up, up, up and down. No, like it's been crazy ride recently and I'm just looking forward to having it be a bit more cozy and calm again. So I'm thinking about just doing these videos. Obviously there's going to be some live chat here and there, but like just focusing on my making and I really, so I really appreciate all the things you have said to me that you've stuck with me through all, all of that and all the lovely messages um, throughout my life, kind of like life transitioning. But yeah, I hope that there's not going to be any more big news in the close future because like I just wanted to be chill now and I'm really looking forward to working there more. I'm actually filming this. It's like 8.45. It's a Sunday. It's uh, the 8th of October. I'm filming this before going to work. We have like a, kind of like a um, town festival in Marburg this weekend and so the shops are open on a Sunday which is not usually the case. So I, I'm usually working there like Tuesday till Saturday and not all of the days but like like I said four days. Usual work, work week is going to be four days for the shop and then I've also recently started doing pattern translation. So I'm working freelance um, for, recently I've only worked for um, this one brand who, uh, one of my best friends, Emma, she's the head of design for uh, Kremke Solwool. Um, I think I've mentioned this kind of a couple of times or for Selected Yarns who have BC Garn, Kremke um, Solwool and some other brands, some other yarn brands, and she's head of design there. So she's been doing booklets and like working with other designers on designs for the brands. And so I've been translating some of these patterns recently. It's been a great, um, it's been great fun. It's been a great source of additional income since obviously I'm not, um, I've taken the plunge also with working in academia, which it didn't pay great since I was only being paid 50 like 75 percent of what I was actually working um but that's like PhD life for you I know so many people are going through this and at least I was paid like I was being paid 75 percent of my work now I'm not I'm earning less in my new job and so this is a very welcome additional income uh obviously I hope you I mean I guess you guys can understand this but yeah, I'm pretty happy with this solution. This is obviously going to be project based, so I'm not always going to work the same amount for it. Just recently I did quite a big project for them. And so there were like two weeks where I worked on that for like two additional hours a day. But then I had like two weeks where there wasn't a project. So yeah, I'm just going to try and see where it fits in. And I'm obviously wanting to focus on YouTube too. Uh, I don't know if I've talked about this, but like I do earn some money through YouTube AdSense. It is not a lot, but uh, for the work I put into it, so I wouldn't say it makes financial sense to do it, but like I don't, that's not why I do it. Obviously, uh, it's great to be paid for a hobby too. 
So it, whenever I do make the money, I try to redirect it into the whole thing. So into Marlene Knits, uh, I do, I don't know, buy festival tickets from it. I do buy yarn and patterns from it. And obviously there are my Ko-Fi, uh, kind of like, would you say patrons? So people that have supported the channel um, over on my Ko-Fi, you can also do like a monthly thing where you uh, subscribe kind of like to my content there. I'm not planning on going behind any paywall anytime soon. Um, I'm hoping to for it to be sustainable this way too. Um, so I can't guarantee you at the moment. If I would do that, I would probably go behind a paywall just because I know I love doing it, but I also know how much time it takes and I don't want to, in this part of my life right now, in this chapter, I don't want to add any um, extra uh, stress on myself because like, I feel like I've just come out the end of a pretty burnout uh, phase and I want to keep up my health right now. It does make so much sense when I say it out loud, so I don't even know why I'm stating it. You all know y'all understand but yeah so I can't guarantee you four videos a month sometimes it's only gonna be two sometimes it's gonna be three or four let's just hope it all keeps up obviously the traveling content is going to get less too this was the last trip that I've planned in a long in a in a while um just because obviously now I'll have to see about money how that all works out and it's yeah, I've done a lot of traveling this year already, so I'm not complaining. I've, I've, um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it so much, and I hope you guys enjoyed the traveling content too. Whenever I do go on a next trip, obviously there's going to be a vlog about it. Um, and yeah, that's enough about the live chat. That's so much live chat. Sorry, you guys. If you do have any questions about it, feel free to leave them in the description box. No, you can't write in there. Feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'm always happy to answer any questions. I always love reading your comments about what you're working on at the moment. And before starting to talk about my whips now, don't forget to like this video if you do like it. I know y'all appreciated the, um, um, the hint about that, like appreciated the reminder to do that because a lot of you watch these podcasts on your tv or something like that so yeah i hope the lighting is okay um like i said it's um yeah it's turning nine o'clock now it's pretty um yeah it's 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 autumn guys i love it uh, and so yeah the lighting might be a thing where i need to maybe adjust some things maybe get like ring light or something like that um if you do have any like experiences with that please let me know um, but yeah, starting with my whips. I hope this live chat was like okay for you guys. Um, first whip is my Stick Season Sweater by Rebecca Klo by the Korea Bea. Um, and this is in Explorer Knits and Fibers Daybreak uh, on their Rockies DK base. So I'm showing you like it would fit my body. I'm almost done with the body. I can show you maybe more like this. Um, I'm almost there. And then since it's a two by two um, ribbing, I've talked to some of the people in the, in the group, in the testing group, and there were some links like sent out for tutorials on how to do a tribula bind off on a two by two ribbing since my a turbula bind off is my favorite uh, way to bind off projects and yeah so I'm going to try that out soon like I said I've been working every day this week uh, except for Tuesday which was a national holiday but like I was uh, I got my period this week and I I was knocked out I was not feeling well I'm also kind of like a bit sick but yeah so some modifications I made with this pattern. Obviously, since I'm using the uh, Rockies DK, which is more of like a sport than a, or like a light DK, I had to go up um, quite a significant amount in my needle size. This calls for three and a half needles, um, millimeter, obviously. Um, I'm using four and a half, four and a half millimeter needles. 
Um, although then for like the ribbing and stuff, I was going down to a four millimeter needle and I don't know how this happened, but like I had all my, like on my bedside table, there were so many needles. And so when I cast on the sleeve, I also went for a four millimeter needles. I just mixed them up. I didn't look like take a second look into my notes, which was pretty stupid of me. But like, I'm not sure if I'm going to rip it out yet. It is quite a denser fabric and I know it's it took more yarn because of that. And so it's already, it's also not at the length that I would need it to. I did all the, um, the decreases and then I started the ribbing actually. But now um, I, I tried it on and everything. I'm gonna block it because the shoulder seam is going to block out, but there's like only that much uh, length that I'm going to get. And this is not even close to my wrist. I mean, it's close to my wrist, but like I want it over my wrist and the ribbing is only going to be about five centimeters. So yeah, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to rip this out. I'm probably after fin finishing the body, I'm going to um, start with the second sleeve and do a 4.5 uh, millimeter needle sleeve on this side, starting with it. And if I can see a huge difference, but which like now talking about it, I'm probably going to rip it out, but I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'm going to block it and see. It's such a pity because like my decreases look stunning, if I do say so myself. Um, like I said, I probably have to rip out this like last centimeter, two centimeters of having started the ribbing because like I need to lengthen it. Uh, but yeah, I stopped when I was through one skein on this side. I used about two skeins for the body, one skein for this sleeve, and I wanted to use the second sleeve, this, the, the fourth skein for my second sleeve. But then I only had about um, until like to my belly button on the body and I was like, okay, so... I could play a serious game of yarn chicken. Going up a half a needle size on the sleeve is going to uh, hopefully give me some more meters um, with this yarn, but like it's not going to be a significant amount, I don't think. And so I was talking about it on my Instagram and you guys, I love this community. Like being able to just like complain or like moan about not knowing if I'm going to have to play yarn chicken. And then just some like, such a kind soul online being like, oh yeah, I think I have um, a skein left over. It's a leave no trace skein, but it looks damn similar to Daybreak. Uh, that was Ulla uh, from Ulla Knits on Instagram. And I was like, mm, would you be like willing to share this skein of yours? And she's like, yeah, I've got two skeins. One I've already planned like a project with, but the other one I don't, I don't need. And so she was so kind uh, and sent it to me. I paid her the price that she paid originally. Uh, and um, I also then realized that she had an online store uh, for hand dyed yarn. And so I bought another skein of her uh, sock yarn too, which is nice. I'm going to show you my acquisition part. And we've been chatting before since um, she also likes to order some of the hand dyer from some of the hand dyers, dyers in the US and we thought maybe we could uh, order together and save some uh, shipping and uh, tax like customs money on that but then I don't know if I've shared this but like I decided not to uh, get any other pre-orders this year hopefully I can stick to it because like financial uh, decisions and um yeah, going to plan some other knits, but also just knitting with the stuff that I have because like that's that's a lot of stuff, <laughs> that's a lot of yarn. So yeah, she sent me the skein. It did look different, um, not so much in the hang, but when I caked it up, I could tell that the um, distribution distribution of the color wasn't as. Um, consistent as in the skeins that were sold for full price. Obviously that is the reason why they're doing leave no trace. It just had more, yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but so my, my thinking behind this was just using the new skein on the ribbing. Cause I was thinking I weighed the yarn that I used for my first sleeve. I went 
up to like 80 grams and I have about 80 grams left for my second sleeve and so all of this is going to be in my original four skeins but then the ribbings are going to be in the new um, in like the leave no trace day, daybreak and I can try and show you the variation in the skein I think you, you're definitely going to be able to see I think the, the skein is also a bit darker So I hope you're able to see. Um, I also put in a stitch marker. This is from Typical Bliss. So you can see how much progress I made since last time we talked. Um, and I'm quite happy with this. Like I said, I'm dreading having to rip out this sleeve. So I'm not sure if I'm going to. I'm not loving the fabric that I'm getting. It's quite dense. I love the fabric that I'm getting with the 4.5 a lot more. But overall, I can't wait to wear this. So yeah, I'm hoping to uh, finish the body maybe tomorrow, doing the cast off, uh, the bind off on Monday. I do have a day off on Monday. Um, and Hannes and I were going to uh, do like a unofficial Sunday on Monday because like we're both working weekends now a lot of the time. And so we got to carve out time to to like do weekend stuff and like just chill together parallel play I don't know <laughs> um yeah so I really love this project I'm a bit bummed that it's going to have these like imperfections but also I don't mind as much I think in the ribbing is going to be deterred like the eye is not going to be like oh yeah that's a difference maybe because of the like textual difference already and yeah, I can't wait to wear this. I know I'm going to love this sweater so much and all the things that um, I've, yeah, I've mentioned now. I'm, I hope that I'm going to be able to show you maybe in, next, in the next episode that I'm finished with this. Um, I'm good on time with this test knit. Um, I went through the beginning quite quickly. So um, yeah, I'm taking my time now with these decisions like how long I want to have it because like this is customizable I have quite a short torso like in comparison to my um, height and uh, the only modification I made so far is I started making a size 4 and then I realized I had slipped in the descriptions so I'm now making a size 5 which now that we're, we talked about Rebecca Rebecca sizing I think is better to for me uh, in the like I like my knits to fit, to size up with her sizing to get a bit more positive ease. So yeah, I now am totally on board with this decision. And um, the other modification I made is I made the ribbing uh, one centimeter shorter. Um, and I will do so on all of the other ribbings to match this, just because I found it was quite a high um, neck collar and I think I like this better on me and yeah so that's a modification I made other than that love the knit love the test so tough to be part of this test knit and I'm already planning a second six season but more on that in my acquisitions okay my second test I already know this video is going to be so long I was so sure on making a short video, but you guys, next video, we're not going to have any live chats. We're just going to go straight into the knitting. I'm actually uh, planning on having breakfast with my boss. I, I know I'm not supposed, with Melanie this morning. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good on time. Uh, but I, I'm going to have to go to vote. Today's a vote in, um, in my, like not in Germany, but like in our um, state like in Hessen, and it's important to go and vote because we don't want, yeah, those bigots to have any more space in parliament than they already have. Okay, brief politics talk. <laughs> okay, second test knit and second whip. I'm so chuffed with my test knits, you guys. I love them so much. This is my Kalini blouse by Paisley Knits by Coley. This is where I was last time we talked. Pretty good, right? So 
So I'm close to finishing the body. I'm not even close to what the description in the pattern says. I'm like seven, six centimeters short of what she suggests. But like, like I said, my torso is shorter than hers probably than the average. I don't know. And I like crop things but I don't want things to be too cropped so yeah I'm maybe adding like a centimeter but I don't know if you can tell and I've got like my pajama bottom still on but if you can if you can see this this is going to be where it's at like my belly button is here so yeah I think it's I think it's quite a good height to crop it at and then I'm only going to have to do the sleeves and the eye cord um, I'm probably going to block it before putting in the eye cord at the uh, neck. Is it like the, yeah. And um, yeah, this is going to be my first eye cord to put on a garment. I've done like applied eye cords and such, but not, um, I've, I haven't done a cumulus plus, which is basically the gist of it. <clears throat> That's like the one pattern that comes to mind when I think about eye cords. I've always done ribbings um, or like folded or like double knitted um, finishings. Yeah, I'm in love with this, but also um, I'm a bit, I was a bit lazy, let's be honest. I knitted on this on my Copenhagen trip and I only brought one skein of the hand dyed yarn. I know that it's possible to do uh, helical knitting when you're in the round, although I don't know if it's possible in uh, Irish moss stitch, which this is. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't plan on doing that. Um, I sometimes with just speckled yarns, like change every three to five rows so I can deter kind of like the, I don't want any like big scale um, kind of like, patterning to happen I want to kind of like change that up so I have been like throughout maybe I'll I'll do it like this throughout this part I've been changing up skeins every couple of rows like every maybe five rows um, but also you can tell that at the end of my first skein which like I said is the only skein I brought on my trip and I finished that skein on the flight home so that was pretty cool um, like on the train ride home I finished the, this one skein that I had taken. You can tell that until about here, um, this is pretty much very little speckles, which could come obviously from the fact that I was knitting the yoke and like they were just speckling different. But also I think that the next skein was just more speckly. So it's hand dyed yarn, so it's obviously going to be different. <clears throat> I don't care too much I think it quite looks like a fade like it was intentional but also I'm thinking about if I'm finished like if I finish knitting the whole project and I don't love that there is lit, like less speckles on my on my boobs basically <laughs> I'm going to maybe duplicate stitch some in so I'm going to and I'm going to have some yarn left over going to see if I can take some of the darker bits out and like just do a couple of duplicate stitch stitches so it just looks a bit more similar to like the more speckled and dark part there. But other than that, I'm just knitting this two pattern. It's quite easy to knit on this um, on the go since it's just knits and purls within like a kind of like a, um, the repeat is just something that you have to remember. But that was qu quite easy. Um, so far this has been amazing. I can't wait to wear this. I put it on at my knit night uh, at the yarn shop yesterday and I had like a white just like long sleeve underneath and it looked so good and I can't wait to wear it. So yeah, whip two. I hopeful to finish this within like October too. I'm good on time again um, finishing the body maybe tomorrow too, maybe doing the eye cord, maybe doing like a finishing body day tomorrow and then um, just sleep island. I'm going to have so many sleeves to knit guys. Like I'm going to show you my third whip and you're going to laugh. Mm. Because 
guess what I finished on my Northland sweater? I finished the body. I did finish the body. I haven't woven in all the ends. This is my Northland sweater for my partner. This is size. Oh, I haven't said all the sizes. So stick season is size five. Mm, Kalani blouse is size four. And this is size three, I think. Uh, it's for my partner. Like I said, it's for Hannes. Um, and yeah, I'm making this in... Did I say what kind of yarn I'm using? <sighs> Sorry, you guys. Um, Kalani blouse is a Surrey cone from Woolly Yarns. And the flock colorway on the very cozy sock base in from Woolly um, Woolberry Fiber Co. I've already like I've always got all the things linked in the description box down below, and I do have Ravelry projects which are linked with my description box. So if there is ever any question about any projects, I hope to have them there. But also you can ask. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so I finished the body. This has been my Lord of the Rings um, knit recently because we're re-watching all of the extended editions. It's Lord of the Rings fall, you guys. <laughs> I don't know what, <sighs> kind of like autumn brings this nostalgia to like for me where I just wanna watch the stuff that I've watched before and like cozy vibes. Um, and so yeah, because this was, such an easy just like stocking it in the round I don't have to look at it I'm just looking at the um at the laptop where the movie is going um yeah so I finished this recently he tried it on several times I'm not sure if I'm ever going to make him something and like and like complete it's going to be a complete surprise maybe some socks where he won't notice that I'm making them for him while I'm making them but like big sweaters and I just love talking to him obviously about this stuff and like him trying it on is going to ensure that it's going to fit the way I want it maybe if I've made like three four jumpers for him I'm going to know all the measurements and like have more knowledge about knitting for men and then maybe then I'm, I'm going to make a surprise knit but yeah this is like I said Northland by Petite Knit I'm still a bit worried about the bunching. I know that I could have picked up like one, like into one stitch down below here, but like, I don't know if that's going to affect it pretty much. I hope that the, the weight of the sleeves is going to cancel it out. I don't know if you can see this. And uh, one of my viewers um, has commented recently saying that whenever she knitted this and she had blocked it, it, um, it helped a lot with this problem with the bunching up there uh, since this is like um i don't know if people have been saying it's a contiguous sleeve it's basically like a saddle shoulder and then you're kind of starting the which is usually kind of like the raglan uh the the increases for the sleeve you're actually starting here rather than here i don't know if that makes a lot of sense but yeah this is the northland sweater I'm also going to be on Sleep Island for this, which means I need to get some row counters. I've been very like really intrigued about them whenever I've uh, seen them uh, recently. Uh, maybe, yeah. So um, it really helps me like putting in loads of stitch markers to mark my sleeve decreases because otherwise I forget to decrease because I'm just like stuck in it in the round. <laughs> And so yeah, I'm going to show you the fabric a bit closer up. This is Drops Alaska in a kind of like browny grayish colorway. Um, like I said, it's it's linked in the Ravelry project page. And I'm going to have quite a lot left over of this yarn. I'm probably going to take it to my um, knitting group and like maybe do a yarn swap. Maybe someone wants to do something with this. Could be good for like a, a kid's sweater too if the kid is not too uh, sensitive because this is like 100% wool it's quite pretty so I'm going to show you the texture I hope you're able to see there's quite a big needle project I think it's a 5.5 needle um, or like a 6 I'm not sure like I said talking about socks next I've started um, another one of my uh, Christmas gift knits 
I'm pretty tangled up here, but basically what this is, is two um, Sunday socks that I've started um, whenever I reached a point in this one where I had to do the heel. I cast it on a second one, so I have two uh, going at the same time, although I am using this, the, the needle for both of them, so I have them on like a stitch holder uh, for the moment. Um, yeah, I'm doing them in size 40, um, EU 40. They always so scrunched up before you, um, before you are blocking them. But yeah, I'm making them for my aunt. Uh, it was her birthday in September. We're not able to see each other that day. And like, um, my mom, it was my mom's birthday a couple of days before. And <laughs> she saw the socks that I gifted my mom and she was like, mm, I love them. <laughs> and uh, for now, I'm not able to make like small scale socks for everyone in my family, just because I've got so much knitting to do for myself. Uh, but yeah, Sunday socks, I think I can churn out a couple. I'm not sure if you say churn out, but like knit some. Um, I have another pair planned, but yeah, I'm just gonna see how much gift knitting and sewing and yeah making I can do until Christmas because like I'm not gonna stress myself too much because of it. Okay second sock knit I'm trying to like stay sharp. Um, second sock is my Petal Drop Sock by Florence, handmade by Florence, Florence Miller. It's this, it's my first lace sock and I love it. I've been doing one row, like one repeat each day. And yeah, I just really love this. This is Olivia and Oliver, um, like sock yarn in cotton which I think is perfect for this like very intricate lacy sock. Um, I'm just following the written out pattern. I bought it on um, Ravelry from Florence and yeah, I really love it. I'm also working on another sock, but I don't have it with me because it's my shop knitting whenever I do have some time, which it hasn't been a lot, but um, this week, whenever I do, I've been knitting on a Grow Sock by Fiber Tales for the shop. It is another um, pattern that one of you guys gifted uh, to me via my Ravelry wish list. Um, that was so nice of you, the person, you know who you are, thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm using it for the shop right now because I suggested that it would be a good thing to have more knitted socks as samples for the different sock bases that we have. Um, we have a, we're trying to have like a kind of like local to Europe, smaller brands, very ecological, like sustainable, um, uh, outlook on all the brands that we do offer, uh, which I think makes for a really nice, um, lineup of brands. And so we do have some like more regular wool with also like more regular sock wool with also some nylon or polyester in it. But we also try and have uh, a lineup of things uh, that are plastic free. And so we do have this Life in the Long Grass um, high twist sock, which I'm making the grow sock with. I'm, I'm going to insert a picture. And um, but we also have some with hemp or stuff like that. So yeah. And because I wanted to suggest to have some socks knit up for the shop, I'm knitting that for the shop. I'm only going to do one for them and then maybe I'll have enough yarn left over to knit uh, a pair for me. But I did also get some other um, yarn for that pattern. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so that's the Grow Socks by Fiber Tales. And yeah, they are my first kind of like cabled, kind of charted sock. Um, and like I said, I started these two pretty much at the around the same time, the, the charts. And uh, the Florence sock is a lot easier. Like that is pretty much, if you knit a vanilla sock, you can knit Florence 
um, pattern if you follow the chart and she has a video a tutorial for it too it's a lot easier the gross sock not so much but like I'm I I'm getting the hang of it and um, it's nice to learn something new and yeah I'm using the color autumn which obviously is so nice and I love it um, and yeah so this is my this is my sock knitting at the moment so I've got three sweaters three sock projects and two blankets coming up um, but yeah, I don't know why. I, I just love it. And I have so many ideas for next cast on you guys. My creative energy and like ideas has been through the roof <laughs> recently and I love it. I'm trying not to get kind of like stressed out by it, but so far it's been amazing. So next project is my Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. Whenever you do hold it up, it gets kind of like, um, it stretches out at the sides a bit, but that's no problem. Um, I think you've seen me mention these four blanket squares already. I've added two more. These are two of the uh, yarns that I got in Copenhagen with my friend Emma. We actually did get a uh, one dyed, like hand dyed skein of yarn from Sislede. This is chocolate chip. And then we got three different colorways from Knitting for Olive. And then we just um, kind of like try to half them. We didn't have a scale with us. It was the most funny thing because like when she got home, she's like, we did such a bad job because <laughs> she put it on her scale and she's like, this is not close to 50-50, but yeah. <laughs> uh, this is Dusty Honey. We also got Autumn from Knitting for Olive and Caramel. So these are the three colorways that are going to go in here too. But I can also insert a picture that I took recently trying to like see how I can put in all of my other scraps. Cause I'm like, my living room right now is like scrap, like hand dyed scrap heaven. And by, by scraps, I mean like 10 to 50 gram like balls, um, cakes because I'm planning my advent swap. I'm planning another advent gift like thing with my friend Lydia. And we're also, Lydia and I together, we're planning on giving away a scrappy yarn advent over on Instagram. So follow us there if you want to take part in this. It's going to go up in a couple of weeks time. We're going to do uh, a giveaway for a hand dyed, um, scrappy advent because like we know how expensive they can be and at the beginning of the year I made this plan to make um, an, a scrappy advent for Lydia and then I don't know why but I somehow I felt like I wanted to share that with her and she's like why didn't you share this sooner I want to make one for you too which I'm like oh yeah that is a nice idea <laughs> I don't know why I didn't uh, come up with that I just sometimes I feel like my ideas like in my head they're so precious and like I want to keep them until I can then like do a huge surprise for someone but like some people don't love that like that's not their love language or like they don't need it to be a huge surprise or in Lydia's case she always says like I'm forgetting it like anyways so if you could tell me now I, I'll, I won't remember in three months like these like tiny things like colorway names or stuff like that so um, yeah, that was a nice idea. So I'm doing a lot of advent swapping and um, the first one I was talking about was through the Crea Bea. I'm taking part in that and I'm so excited. I was um, paired with a person in Belgium, I think. And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking at their palette now and I'm like, oh, she loves, loves that because like, I think it's beautiful. Like, I would be so happy to receive it. I'm trying to do kind of like a fade in a way so having them having it be kind of like making sense I'm not sure if the person is watching my videos now I don't think she knew of the podcast or she wasn't following me on Instagram and I wasn't following her so we just gotten to know each other via email and it's it's so nice I'm looking forward to it so yeah sweet shop blanket and then my next blanket is a bit bigger already this is the comfort throw by a homespun house but I've uh, kind of like adjusted it. It's not the same as it was or it was planned to be. It was planned to be also for an advent, but I'm just doing 10 gram minis or like scraps. 
and I love it so much. I haven't worked on it in a while, but I don't think I've shared what I have accomplished before the last episode. So yeah, let's look at this. I love it so much. Yeah. So this is still growing. Now I have, I always put the leftover skeins. This was for my sock that I just finished. This is maybe like 50 grams still. I didn't use a lot for that um, sock. This was the Dusty Honey. Uh, I just put in my sweet shop blanket. Um, this was from the sock two as well as this. So this was the um, kind of like sock set. And then this was uh, one of the Sorella minis that I got from the flock Sorella like color bar. And uh, I've already put this in the sweet shop too. So whenever I've put something in the sweet shop or vice versa, do you say that? Like vice versa? Yeah. Whenever I put it in here, I put it in another. <laughs> I have so many baskets laying around my living room and I'm like, this is not a living room anymore. It's my yarn my personal yarn shop and I'm so happy that Hannes doesn't care <laughs> or he I mean he has his guitar corner I have my yarn corner um I love that we're aligned on that because uh, so I'm just um collecting them all but like I'm looking at so many more colors I don't want to share too many of them because I'm not sure if like I said my swap partner or Lydia are watching and I don't want to spoil too much because like yeah, I want some of the advents to be a surprise. The one thing that I'm not looking forward to with this blanket is weaving in the ends. I don't know if you can see, but I've woven in one part of the end already, like while going. But the other end is just still hanging out here. Um, I'm thinking about applying, like doing an applied eye cord at the end to kind of like strengthen the... Um, the corners too it's so squishy like I love the idea of like wrapping myself up in this on my couch like already it's so lovely um yeah I'll get to the ends when I get to it I'm not too worried and I also love the other side of it like the one where I change color I think looks so nice too I just think that it's going to look, look nice on either side I just have to find a good solution for all the ends and yeah, if I do do an, like an eye cord, I'm probably going to try and hide some of them in there or I'm just going to, to tie like a really tight knot and cut them. Would have been a nice idea to like do uh, kind of like a Lerke Baga uh, way and just... Um, tie it and cut it. I, we've seen when whenever we were in Copenhagen, we saw so many um, samples by Lenke uh, designs in the shops. The, da the Danish people are crazy about her. I mean, she's Danish too, I think so. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, but yeah, Emma and I, we, we saw a lot of kind of samples and I, I like the look of that too. But yeah, it's too late. I've already started doing it different, but <clears throat> differently. But yeah, I'm loving seeing my blankets grow and having them on my bed and our couch in the future. And so, yeah, I've talked about all of my um, knitting projects now. I'm going to talk about my first sewing project on this channel. Um, if you're following me on Instagram, you you will have seen that, I'm, that I've started to sew too. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I asked my uh, mother-in-law to be if she wanted, if she was using, if she did have a sewing machine and if so, if she was using it. I mean, we were talking about it and then she offered to give it to me as kind of like a, um, to lend it to me. So it's living at my place now, but it's still her <laughs> machine, but she's not using it. So I can, I can have it for now. Um, as I was making a couple of scrunchies, I'm already planning on gifting some to my friends and family too. And then it was pretty clear to me that I wanted to make some bags before I was making any. Uh, I think I'm going to try a top, like a camisole um, next. But for now, I'm wanting to make project bags. Um, and this is another thing that I want to do as gifts, knitting, as gift sewing, gifting for Christmas too, 
and I hope that it's going to work out. So my first project is this project bag. Um, it's quite a big project bag, so it would be good for either a sweater project, but also I'm thinking it could be good, good as like a bread bag. I know a lot of people are trying to be more conscious, using less plastic. Uh, when we go food shopping, we try to bring all our own bags and uh, a lot of them are like canvas material or they look similar to like the breeze bag by Petite Knit. It's just like these regular kind of like net bags. And with bread, it's the same thing. Like I'm baking a lot of my own bread, so I'm, I can put my bread in here too. Um, it's kind of like an old thing to do, I think. It's like a traditional thing to do, but to, put, to put your bread into a cotton bag. And my most favorite detail about this bag is that I sewed in my label. It says handmade by Merlene. I hope this camera was focusing and I kind of like messily stitched it. The same stitch I use for all of the finishings. I'm so proud of myself for this. I know it doesn't look like much. This is actually uh, a dish, no, uh, a tablecloth by Ikea. I got it on sale. It was pretty affordable, like maybe 15 euros uh, for like a huge 100% cotton <clears throat> dishcloth. No, not dishcloth, tablecloth. And then I just cut it to the measurements and I'm planning to make more, like I said, also for gifting, but I don't want to go into much detail, into too much detail, but because I know some people might be watching that I want to gift them too. So whoever is watching and thinking about that they might get one of those, forget about it again. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, so I put in a, a string bag. It also, it obviously looks like I had one of those when I was a kid going to um, gym classes, like at my school, <laughs> it's pretty big. So I'm planning on making some that are more like maybe this size. And I'm also, so for now I'm just making these drawstring bags. I got the draw string at, um, actually in Copenhagen, I'm going to show you in my haul. Uh, but yeah, I'm also planning on making some more um, difficult bags in the future. I've been watching some tutorials on this and um, yeah, I just want to make some with uh, also that are more easily standing up and then maybe some patchwork things. I've got some fabrics in my last video I showed you. And so yeah, I'm really excited. And I've also been contacted by a brand, which I love, and they're sending over some more fabric and I can't wait to see it and maybe do some patchworking. And yeah, so this has just like these orange uh, stitching, which I think is beautiful. And like, I think I did a pretty good job cutting this out because it's very even. And yeah, it's very personalized. And I hope the people receiving these as like, you can use them as like shoe bags if you're traveling, you can use them as bread bags. I'm thinking about making, like using them as gift ba bags. So putting gifts for Christmas into these bags rather than putting them into paper, like Christmas paper. So yeah, project bag. So that was the first thing that was not knitting. Now the second thing that was not knitting is my first little ball of hand spun yarn. Um, ignore like the end coming out. I try to make it into a ball so I can then um, ply from this whenever I have a second ball. I've not weighed this and it looks so tiny from all the work that I've put into it. Uh, I've just tried to like take an hour, the one day I have like completely off work, a week and just spin for like an hour in the morning. I've done this once <laughs> last week and uh, I have wound it off I'm not sure. I mean, this is like a very, very beginner drop spindle too. There is, there's a lot more about drop spindling, I know, but this is a very slow process and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to spin, um, drop spindle, spin a whole sweater quantity in my life because it's just too much to do. I just wanted to see whether I liked it in the first place 
I'm going to try and make something with it, maybe a Christmas ornament or something. It's a pretty nice like cream white color. So, uh, but if I'm applying this, it's going to be huge. It's going to be bulky for sure. It's a very thick and thin. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, um, I'm going to see how this works out. But what I was actually trying to talk about was that I'm going to have kind of like a private lesson of wheel spinning in about two weeks. And I'm really looking forward to um, that. Um, I met someone really lovely. She's doing uh, like she's teaching courses at our yarn shop too. And um, when we went to the yarn festival together, I got some um, braids of spinning um, fibers and I'm planning on trying my luck with that new endeavor. And so yeah, she's going to help me teach um, me how to wheel spin. And then I'm thinking if that like clicks and I feel like I would love that to do that, I'm thinking about maybe saving up to get a wheel for Christmas for myself or like ask for some money for Christmas and save some and then get a used wheel. Um, so yeah, and I think that is like trying the wheel before buying it is a good thing for me or just in general, it's a good thing to try stuff before you buy it. And yeah, so that is something that's up next. Acquisitions. I've got two. No, I don't. I'm not even able to hold up the, th the second thing. I've got too many acquisitions, guys. I need to go on a yarn van. I know um, I'm literally just waiting for one thing to happen for a shop that I wanted to uh, order from for some time to bring out the space that I wanted to try. It's supposed to be the same as the Sonder Yarn Co. Um, base. So it's a BFL and Masham mix which the petite knitter uses for her Mudo sweater, which is going to be my first colorwork sweater this winter. It's one of the two uh, patterns that's left on my wish list on Ravelry. So if you do want to treat me, um, there's two project like patterns left. I'm not going to ask for any more this season just because I like, I'm first of all, feel so lucky for all the gifts you gave me so far and the same with like putting a ban on my shopping. I want to put a ban on buying patterns too, or like asking for pattern gifts, just because I have everything that I need right up until the end of the year and further probably. But like, I just want to now go from the summer of like spending and acquiring and um, don't get, get me wrong. Like I also made a lot of stuff during that time. But I also did enhance my staff stash quite a bit. And so yeah, I'm just trying to work with what I have, which is basically the point. But yeah, that is the one thing that I'm allowing myself to get. And if there is anything that I need for a project that I've already started to finish it, like a ball of mohair or stuff like that, I would get that too. But other than that, I'm not going to buy any more yarn for the foreseeable future. Um, so yeah, that's just it. Let me start with my acquisitions from Copenhagen. The first shop we went to was Tante Tot. I am going to link our Copenhagen map here. And I also did kind of like a highlight of all the stores that we went to, except for Tante Tot. Cause other than this yarn, I didn't find anything else that I was interested in because there was a lot of stuff that we could also get in Germany and I'm not getting when I'm in Germany because it doesn't really interest me as yarn brands and quantities, qualities. But yeah, this one brand I wanted to try out for a long time. Um, it's Viking Garn and I heard of this or I, I know of it through... Um, Inga from Knitting Traditions. So this is a Norwegian yarn brand um, and it's the Froya, which this is a, it's um, superwash wool, so superwash wool and nylon 8020. Uh, I love this color. And like I said, the one thing I was looking for um, yarn wise was some yarn for my, um, for my socks. 
I now realize I didn't even look at the thickness of this, so this might even this might not be the right um, thickness for because it's more like a sport weight than uh, fingering. It's 50 grams per 150 meters, um, but I was looking for a colorway to use for my um, growth socks that I've now started with another yarn, but I'm just probably going to make like a two by two, three by one ripped socks out of this. And I, I really love the yarn color. So this, like I said, it's going to be a huge haul. So I'm trying to be quick about it. The One of the next stores that we went to was Tante Grün. Um, I'm probably gonna butcher all the names. I really tried to look up the how to spell and like pronounce things but then like i forget forget again this was their own brand it's 100 percent cotton yarn and this is a very true black colorway and i got this to make um a camisole next year maybe the nelly top they had um a sample in the shop my friend emma has made the nelly before so um, I didn't know much about like camisole and top knitting before this summer myself, but when it comes to these things, my, my friends, like I said, are always a great resource of learning uh, about stuff like that. And Emma has made uh, a couple of really gorgeous summer knits. And yeah, the Nelly top was one of the things that I was like, hmm, maybe I'm going to make that too. It's my spectacular stick. And I just think like a black camisole is going to be so versatile. So this is going into my summer knitting stash for next year. But yeah, I really like how it feels. It feels super soft, although it's like 100% cotton and it's by their own brand. And I just like the idea of having something from their brand. Um, another thing I got from Tante Grün was, was this Nordic Yarn Lab. It was another kind of like brand that they offered that I hadn't seen anywhere else before. This is 100% virgin wool and this has a beautiful marling. So this has these like blue and brown specks and I'm not sure what to make with this. I got it, I picked it up, I'm like, oh, I wanna get this. I don't know what to make with it. Then Emma was like, oh, I'm gonna take one too. And so maybe we're gonna make a matching project, maybe like a little silky scarf. But also maybe something for a kid, like maybe a hat for a baby would be cute out of this. Like I said, 100% virgin wool and super beautiful speckle, speckles. So yeah, another thing I got from Tante Grün. And then two more things I got from them was obviously the bag. I think I'd seen this in one of the Cop Copy Dolls Copenhagen vlogs that they had these bags and I just think... They're so cute. And I think you can't have enough bags. Like like I said, we take them out, food shopping and everything. Um, and I just love the green on the canvas. Um, and yeah, the last thing that I got, because I feel like there's two things that I always want, or three things that I always want to get when I'm traveling, is a skein of hand dyed yarn, or like a special skein of yarn, a mug, and then second of all, third of all, uh, needle gauge. I can't use them all in my lifetime, but like I love collect them, collecting them. <laughs> I told you I had gotten one from Washington from my friend, from my friend uh, Chelsea, and yeah, I got one for myself in Copenhagen. Um, I actually also got a mug, like I said, from Handmade by Marley Marla Marla. I'm gonna insert a picture because I don't have it with me in this room right now. Um, but I wanted this mug for the longest time. I had it on my wish list for like years. I've been following that maker for years on Instagram. So I'm really happy that I got it. Now at a shop in Copenhagen. Um, oh no. Okay. Next up, I got some um, crafting stuff from Sistrine Grena. Um, I got some of these like pins. I lost, oh, here it is, pa fabric clips. And I put them in my, in this thing that I got. 
to put next to my sewing machine. This is kind of like a wood, not, it's not wooden, it's kind of like stone tray. Uh, and then I got this kind of like cords, which I then used for my project bag. So yeah, it's just some, some crafting stuff. Um, I'm not going to talk about this more. It's from Sustrene Grene. I think it's so practical that they offer stuff like that for so cheap. So this was two euros. It's like, I don't know how many are in here, but like it's quite a good amount of, of clips for my sewing. And this was uh, $3 uh, or euros. And this was four euros. And yeah, with this, this really helped my sewing mojo because um, I like just having cute stuff for my making. That's just me. And this was really practical too, as well as the cord. The last couple of yarny stuff that I got from Copenhagen were this Gepard Teddy Deer. Um, I wanted to make another hottie sweater with this by Paula Strict. I've made one for myself before and I'm planning on making one for my mom too. But I also wanted to make a small one for myself. And because the drops boucle is not really such a nice quality um, and the boucle optic, like the effect is kind of wearing off quite rapidly. I wanted to get something that was more like a thick boucle and try again with this. So yeah, I got this. I saw it at two stores and I'm not sure at which one of those I got it at at the end. I think Brunstrick. Um, but I also saw it at Ulstedet, I think it's called. And yeah, I got the hand dyed skein. This is what it looks like in a skein. Um, this is actually the one that Emma and I um, put to the side for our friends Lydia. We wanted, because we're all the, the three of us are making the sweet shop blanket, and we wanted uh, for her to have one similar color too, although she wasn't with us on the trip. Um, yeah, we um, divided the skein into three pieces and I'm still having to give this to her. We haven't seen each other since I came back. Um, yeah, last yarny thing I got in Copenhagen was this yarn quantity for a cumulus blouse. I'm going to take out one of each. I'm going to show you. I got this Trio 1 by Isager or Isager. And then uh, Alva by Phil Colana. And so I'm planning on making I'm planning on making a cumulus blouse with this. This was inspired by my friend Emma, who has made is a is trio one held with I think mohair a cumulus blouse um, before. And so she recommended this to me. This has linen cotton and lion cell in it and so um yeah she was wearing that on the day when we were out and I was like oh I, I think I need some more like in between not like a chunky like DK sweater but more of like a maybe more open gauge blouses and so yeah I got this because of her I'm making the cumulus blouse because it's like a very popular pattern but also my other friend Lydia she has made like four of them or something like that and so I always see her combining them in the best ways um, and yeah so it's a cumulus blouse it's a very popular pattern but I have people in my life who are making them and who look great in them and so yeah I wanted to make something special uh, with 100% alpaca rather than using a mohair I just thought that was more like it was special it was something I hadn't seen other people do before Obviously, this was a recommendation by my friend, but she used mohair and uh, I really like using alpaca. I think uh, it suits, like I, I really tolerate it well, I think, hopefully, <laughs> I'm not making that up. But yeah, I have another sweater with uh, um, alpaca lace yarn in it and I really like wearing it and I thought this was a nice color combination. Um, Emma helped me pick them out and I think... Yeah, I am going to love the the marling 
because it's like quite low contrast, but it's going, this is going to give it more warmth. This is going to cool it down a bit. And I like that it's going to cancel it like out to kind of like a neutral colorway, which I love. So yeah, Cumulus Blouse in the making, hopefully sometime soon. I have too many sweater quantities in my life to all make them within like a reasonable time frame, but also I kind of love that. Like I love knowing that I have so much yarn that I, I'm looking forward to make stuff with, but I gotta stop now. <laughs> okay, no, this is actually the last yarny thing. I hope I'm not too frazzled for you guys. This is the Heltools Ulspindri Socke Garn, and I wanted to get something from this brand going to Copenhagen just because there is quite they're quite well known. Um, I actually got a sock pattern with this. This was on sale, so I got one skein of this. My friend Emma told me that her experience with the Heltold Ulspindri uh, for like garment knitting wasn't the best. Like she said, it's it's quite rustic and not very comfortable. Like it wasn't. She got that I wanted to get something like that because of like the local aspect of it. But she's like, when I saw this, she's like, yeah, go for this. Cause like I can make some homey cozy socks with this. Uh, maybe translate this down Danish pattern for myself. Would love to learn how to speak Danish and like learn another language. Cause like there's so much we understand when we're there. Cause there's a lot of English and German influences on the, the language I think, but yeah, so Heltold Ulspindri, I just love to say that name, probably butchering it, but yeah, that's going to make some house stocks for myself. Now on to... No! Okay, I lost one, but now on to... I've got so many of these like little bags that the accessories came in. I got some knitting accessories and some Christmas tree accessories. So first for the knitting accessories, I got two um, stitch markers. This one is just a, a pretty stone. I got this at Ulstedet, Ulstedet, and this one I got at Woolstock. I got two of the shells. I just lost one of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, these were the two stitch markers that I got on our trip. And then I got two ornaments and they're made with these little, um, is it acorns or like, what are these things called? I'm not sure. Maybe it's acorns. Um, and I adored them because it's like a um, felted kind of like acorn-esque thing in there. And we do have a lot of felted Christmas ornaments. And so they're going to be so perfect on our tree and it was in a little store close to I think Tante Tot, um, the first yarn shop, yarn shop we went to and so yeah I got two for our Christmas tree and so this is everything that I got in Copenhagen. I'm going to move on with this sock skein that I got from Little Fibers, um, Five Bears, <laughs> who is Ula who gave me or who sold me this uh, daybreak, leave no trace from um, Exploring Nets and Fibers. I saw that she had an online shop. I didn't know that before. And so I asked her if she could put one on top of the mountain skein into the package and obviously then paid for it. And she's like, yeah, I could do that. And so this is the sock. And she actually put in um, a little buddy a little friend for the on top of the mountain sock set which is so kind of her and she put in a little note and yeah so I really love the look of this sock set it's going to go into my sock set like special skein wall whenever I manage to start another project with the yarn there because like I'm running out of space I hope there's not gonna be any like mean comments being like you should stop buying yarn if you're overwhelmed by it I mean I know guys but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Okay, now into a hashtag ad, hashtag gifted 
section. So these yarns were gifted to me by Woolly Knit. First of all, so they approached me trying like asking if I wanted to collaborate on this um, campaign with them, which was Woolly uh, Worldwide, Woolly something. I forgot the campaign name. <laughs> Um, it's over now, so like I said, if you want to be up to date about these things, Instagram's the place to be. Um, but yeah, they were dropping prices on their shipping internationally, so they're trying to make that more um, affordable for people around the world, not only in the UK. So, because <sighs> of the yeah Brexit thing, it's gotten difficult. Um, but yeah. So I asked them for some shade cards because I thought this would be really helpful for any other woolly knit purchases in the future. This is the Merino wool. Um, there are just some shades whoa, that they offer. I hope, I hope this thing is focusing like at least somehow. And this is the pure new wool, which I think is the British wool too. this is not working I'm not sure maybe I'll put in some b-roll and then they also send me the cotton which I think I might get like a cone of the cotton uh, in summer whenever I knit through all my other stuff obviously but yeah they also have some beautiful shades on the cotton so I really like these shade cards I think they will be a nice like decorative thing um, just in general but then if I do ever uh, in the future, order from them myself, which I, I did last year. Um, and now they sent me some stuff to show you guys. Yeah, I really like the idea of these. And um, yeah, like I said, they're really helpful. Um, so the first thing that they sent me was this beautiful skein of wool. I'm pretty sure this is the British wool. And I'm also pretty sure... I'm also pretty sure that it's the cinnamon brown because like this looks really similar. Yeah, so I think this is the British wool uh, 200 grams Hank in cinnamon brown, which I love the color, obvious, obviously. I'm not sure what I will make with it. Maybe it can become a scarf, maybe with some merino, with some mohair just to make it a bit more fluffy and um, soft because this obviously is a bit more rustic but I feel like if it's washed and then like to just drape around yourself this would be would be lovely so yeah this cone it's not a cone it's a hank they sent me this hank and then also they sent me these two cones and yeah, so this is the Pure New Wool cone in the colorway Cotswolds. And then this is the Merino Wool cone in Mostazza. So I hope you can see, I already own two other Merino and uh, I think they're both Merino cones from them that I bought myself before. Another green, this is more vibrant than the one I already got, that's Moscow brown I think it's a green brown and then I have a nap one which is like beige with naps um, and yeah so I'm not sure what to make with this yet I was actually thinking about maybe doing a giveaway with this I don't know if any of you would be interested to trying this yarn out um, like I said I have so much yarn and I have a plan with this um, so yeah maybe if you're interested share in the comments if that would be something that you would be interested in but yeah I'm thinking about doing a giveaway for this and I'm also planning some more giveaways for this channel for maybe some upcoming milestones <laughs> and with this I've actually made a gauge swatch I got I gotta get it um, to show you because I'm planning on making a stick season sweater with this for my partner I thought it would be so lovely to have kind of like a green and red stick season for the cozy season. I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish this this year uh, before Christmas, but I'm going to try. So yeah, this is going to become a stick season. I'm going to get the 
yarn swatch I'm going to show you. I already had it stuck to my board, so it was quite difficult to get it off. Um, this is the gauge swatch. I hope, I hope you can see. Um, I will have to go up another half needle size, I think. I obviously held it double to create a DK weight, and I love the stitch definition and a, the color a lot. Like, this is going to look so good on Hannes. And yeah, um, just going up half a needle size. Uh, this is a bit smaller than 10 by 10, so I uh, already blocked it. Um, going to go another, like, up another half needle size. I think I'm more of a tight knitter than the Kreia Bea is, so. But second to last, I think, was the fiber festival that we went to. It was the Westerwelder Wollfest, where I went with my new colleagues from the yarn shop. Um, and yeah, let me show you what I got. So I got some spinning fibers, but I'm first going to show you the yarn that I got. There was this um, store, this booth, uh, it was called Strickwerk 34 and I got two skeins. I got this um, baby alpaca silk cashmere. That is just so soft. Like this is butter. And I'm going to make a scarf with this. I already, like I want to have this scarf now because like it is so soft. Like I said, baby alpaca silk and cashmere. It's the dream. And it has like a really nice um, marled effect. And the second skin that I got is some merino superwash wool, yak and nylon. And uh, so this is going to be a ripped, a ripped sock. Um, these were quite inexpensive for what they are. This was 21 euros and this, this was 25 euros. And imagine like this, this has cashmere in it. They were so good. And this shop is actually not too far from us. It's in Idamunde, which if you're in Marburg, it's not too far. And she has uh, a shop too. So it's in Hessen too. If you're from here, you can check them out. You can go there, you can visit them. And I really highly, from what I can tell now, I would highly recommend them. And I can't wait to make a scarf and some socks with it. The next thing, next thing that I got were some stitch markers. I actually got some seasonal stitch markers. This was from Atelier Marie Lucienne and it's made with wood. This is a tiny mushroom. And then I also got some, sorry for the crinkling noise. And I also got a little gingerbread men. And I think they're so cute. And they have these like openings um, so I can use them as progress markers. They're quite big as like just regular um, round, beginning of round markers. I usually use some quite basic ones for that or just ones with the like stones on it but these ones will be perfect progress markers for my projects in autumn and winter so yeah i love them they were quite affordable this is like certified wood good quality and hand like she draws them by hand and i think they're really really cute and the last couple of things that i got from the fair were some friendly sheep handmade by Berna. Um, one was Cradle and Merino uh, braid in, I think this is, yeah, just to um, spin with. And then I got some European Merino. And this was, I think this was a braid and this was a comb. I'm still learning about about the um the words the sewing words but yeah these were just two things that i thought looked so cool and i just wanted to try out they were so inexpensive too this was 12 euros and this was 650 and yeah i just thought i'd try out a couple of different things with my spinning um now i'm just like good with my spinning fiber and i can try out all the things hopefully on the wheel too and uh the last thing I was really looking forward to was from Frau Wölfchen. Um, she's a German um, 
I think she's a, she knows so much about all of this stuff. Her name is Heike and uh, I met her. She was lovely too. She does hand dyeing, but she also knows a lot about like she breeds and spinning, a lot, so much about spinning. And I got this comb, is it comb? This braid from her. I just adored all the colorways. And um, this is hopefully going to be my first like big spinning project and this is also one thing that I'm like looking forward to make something with with the other stuff I'm like obviously I, I love the fibers and I also love the the Coriadale that I got to try and spin with it's just just undyed which when you drop spindling and it like there's nothing happening um in terms of colors uh, it's a bit more difficult to motivate yourself to go on whereas if you have something like this I think it would be um, pretty easy to keep up motivation. So yeah, this is kind of like an autumnal mix of oranges and greens. And this is a really moody. I would say this is perfect Halloween colorway. So yeah, I hope that I'll be showing and sharing a bit more about my spinning and sewing too. Although I don't want this to get too big, too um, messy, this part of the episode. I already think it's quite quite a long episode too and I gotta get going to grab a coffee with Melanie before we open the shop for a, an open Sunday at work which I hope there is going to be as many people as there were yesterday we're super busy but I love it like people are receiving like they they love that there's a new yarn shop local yarn dealer around and yeah I hope I hope I Kind of mention everything if there's any projects that i'm not mentioning but you know that i've been working on them it's just one scarf that i'm not showing because i haven't made any more new progress on it anything else i showed you i did work on um by the way i uh, wanted to mention at the end that i'm wearing my april cardigan these are uh, buttons by pigeon and wishes this shirt is just by um and other stories i've got i have had it for years and yeah, this is my outfit. I'm going to put on some like real pants now and going go vote and then go to work. And I hope you guys had a lovely time knitting along to my podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the kind of like um, frame was good on this video. And I hope you have a good week ahead of you. I hope I'll be able to edit and post this soon. And then I'm going to come back with another episode in maybe two weeks. I hope you're all staying healthy. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and having so much knitting time at the moment. Knitting mojo, ideas, plans. And um, yeah, I wish you all happy making, happy knitting and see you next time. Bye.